All right, there's a mockingbird outside just having the time of his life, so if you hear any tweeting, you know, that's not me. Anyways, while it seems there's a nice lull in his song, let's get to it. Welcome to devlog number 11, and uh, no, no Emacs this week, maybe? We'll find out. Well, for those of you who've looked at the length of this episode, you'll notice that, well, it's not quite as long as the previous offerings, and that's because I might have been a little optimistic about the development rate I could maintain, but you know, I'm trying to get the low-hanging fruit feature wise of course. So first off, wall running no longer requires the movement input towards the wall. So you know, you just kind of slap yourself onto it, you jump, you slap onto a wall and you know it goes. And this one, so, you know, speaking of low hanging fruit, I just had to basically comment out a line, then delete a condition in a probably an if statement that is too big for its own good. And you know, low hanging fruit, my kind of low hanging fruit, the lowest of fruits. And this is basically a bit of mise en place for all the movement improvements I have planned out. Next up, something I wanted to implement a boost pad so i talked about this how i wanted a vertical boost pad so i know like a bunch of other games have this um think of the gravity lifts in halo so just something that'll shoot the player up so that way you can gain a lot of vertical height really easily and you know i thought this was going to be really hard but my thousands of lines of movement code came in handy and uh i could i just had a pretty easy solution i had to uh i had to change some things and i kind of sabotaged myself on a future feature but all's well that ends well. Next, minimum, or I guess I should say maximum grapple gravity. This is why footage is great. I watched a bunch of people play and it was evident that whilst grappling, they just held down forward, which due to the mysteries of the grapple that I have not explained at all, that causes the player to swing down instead of just zipping straight to the target. I wanted to make people's lives a little easier since again, I explained nothing. So I reduced the amount of gravity the player could experience doing such a maneuver. Finally, some more low hanging fruit, moving platforms. When I implemented the actor version of them, I never actually tested them. I just kind of assumed since I basically copy pasted a bunch of code, they'd work. And they did for the most part. I made a little oopsie. The alterations I made to my movement code to make the boost pad work also introduced a very unwanted bug when exiting a moving platform. But after I figured out what exactly was causing the bug, the fix was pretty simple. I just had to multiply some stuff by some other stuff and it all worked out. And that's it progress wise this week. I told you at the start that things were gonna be a little slim, but I do have some behind the scenes production ideas that I'm going to share with you. So looking at my uh, work schedule for the rest of the year, basically, I don't know how often I'm going to be on my desktop. And I'd like to say I could do this on my laptop, but that thing, I'll pull up the specs, you know, I'm really pushing it. So I'm going to switch to a bi-weekly schedule for the foreseeable future. And I'm also going to release things other than devlogs. I'm kicking around the idea of a game dev related tutorial mini series that I could release on the weeks where it'd just be too hard for me to produce a regular video. But even though I won't be releasing a video, I'll always be plugging away at Sick Transit when I get the time. So next week, no video. But the week after that, yes video. Will it be? I don't even know myself. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope you have a nice day. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to share them. I love hearing from you guys and I'll be sure to respond. And if you like the video, please give it a like. And if you want to follow along with development, please subscribe. As always, I also post little amuse-bouche development updates on Twitter. Feel free to follow me there at dev underscore natsu. And I also post bread early on Twitter as well. So if you like it, you can get it fresh there. And speaking of bread, let's get to it. So this week I made Shibata again, and I'm always surprised at how big it ends up. Uh, so for my sourdough, I use 800 grams of flour, and for ciabatta, I use 600 grams. And you know, 600 grams, divide that into two loaves, 300 grams, but these things end up huge, like they're over a foot. Uh, so yeah, it's big bread. Uh, but you know, if you take a look inside at the crumb, since it's, you know, I, I ferment it with uh, my, with the biga, pretty aggressively like for ciabatta i actually i've had a lot of success since it's kind of cool in my kitchen i've had a lot of success putting it in a cooler with a big measuring cup like a like a 500 milliliter measuring cup that i've just put in like boiling water in so it basically creates a really nice steamy warm environment 
that lets it rise pretty aggressively. And again, um, I went really high on the hydration this time. Like I was feeling myself, I felt good that day. And I just, I think I did like a 85, over 85% hydration on this one, which again, if you look at the crumb, let me just zoom in. Um, it's really well, it's always really crummy. Like there's big old, big old air pockets. And it was, it was really good. It's really great ciabatta. Like it's super light, super soft. And again, it, since it is 85% hydration, when I first had it, like, oh, so moist. Anyways, it's great bread. Good. It was good ciabatta. And I'm happy that, you know, the days of making ciabatta poorly are behind me. And uh, so it, this is reassuring to me that I can still do it and still crank out some really nice attractive ciabattas and again uh i used my sourdough starter in the biga so again this is this is wild yeast at work and so tastes good tastes great and you know i'll be signing off uh, you should make your own bread it's good for you it's healthy it's delicious it makes great gifts yeah make your own bread